When you think of Sunsoft, I'm willing to bet that the first things that come to mind are some of the best tunes on the NES. As was the case for many game companies in the late 90s, Sunsoft paid more attention to Sony's PlayStation than the more business risky N64. But Sunsoft did publish two interesting games for Nintendo's platform, both from the same series. Let's take a look at Chameleon Twist and Chameleon Twist 2. Sunsoft seems to have actually not had a ton to do with the Chameleon Twist series, simply serving as publisher for the West. In Japan, the games were developed and published by Japan System Supply. Aww, oh, isn't that the best? Aside from the Chameleon Twist series and a Japan-exclusive Game Boy game, it's hard to find much evidence of Japan System Supply's time in the game business. Chameleon Twist was released early on in the N64's life, in late 97, and features some pretty interesting ideas. You play as a curious chameleon who follows an Alice in Wonderland type rabbit into a magical land where you're transformed into... well, something that doesn't look very much like a chameleon, that's for sure. I can't decide if he's more of an anthropomorphized billiards ball or Lolo with a body? The default chameleon is Davy, but you can also choose three others who play identically. The goal is pretty much just to have a fun adventure. There's no one to save, no villain out to destroy the world. This game is nothing more than a vacation from Davy's everyday chameleon life. But he is still a chameleon, which is the foundation for the game's main twist. Chameleon Twist is a 3D platformer in which your primary tool is a long tongue that you can control with the analog stick. Sure, plenty of games are built around characters that eat their enemies, but the way that Davy and friends use their tongues still feels fairly unique. As you'd expect, any small enemy that comes in contact with Davy's tongue gets eaten. The more enemies you grab with a single slurp, the more shots you can fire with your next attack. What's interesting is that all regular enemies are sprites, so there can be quite a lot of them on screen. By holding Z, you can stand on your tongue and do a high jump. The timing is kind of a bit tricky. For some reason, the camera angles can make it difficult for me to judge when high jumps are required. I died so many times in this room because I thought the platforms were much further apart and higher up than they actually are. The last two moves have to do with attaching your tongue to poles in the environment. Once attached, you can do one of two things. Simply continue holding B and wait a moment for Davy to pull himself over, or hold A and a direction to rotate. This is a pretty clever mechanic, but is also by far the most awkward move in the game. I like the idea, but it never felt quite right to me. Chameleon Twist was released in the age of 3D platformers, but I think it deserves special recognition for living up to the platformer moniker. The most famous platformers on the N64 aren't really platformers in the traditional sense, if you think about it. While they do have a lot of jumping and plenty of challenge in their own way, games like Banjo-Kazooie and such are really more about exploration and discovering things in the environment. Chameleon Twist, on the other hand, is something of an oddity in its generation for being designed around linear levels and more traditional sorts of platforming challenges. Despite some frustrating moments, Chameleon Twist is overall a super easy game that can be finished in two to three hours. Checkpoints are extremely frequent, and every checkpoint is forever. Even if you game over, you always continue just a bit behind where you die. The biggest challenge is collecting the optional crowns in every level, many of which are located in very tricky places. There are only six levels in the fantasy world. Jungle Land, Ant Land, Bomb Land, Desert Castle, Kids Land, 
which is mostly all about sweet foods, and I personally take a lot of offense at the implication of delicious sweets being for kids. And lastly, Ghost Castle. The Ant Queen battle deserves special mention for being a bit annoying, but overall the boss fights are pretty fun. Even if it's not perfect and is really short, Chameleon Twist is a good game with good ideas that any N64 fan should give a fair shot. Back in the day, this is what we called a good rental, and that's exactly what Chameleon Twist was to me. Since I finished it so fast back then, it didn't seem worth buying at the time, but I did have fond memories of it and grabbed a copy for cheap in more recent years. Thankfully, it isn't hard to find, but I always tended to forget that there's another game you don't see quite as often and doesn't tend to be priced quite as fairly. But I finally got a copy of Chameleon Twist 2. First things first, yes, you actually transform into something that looks like an anthropomorphic chameleon. And oh, high voltage screaming, what? Okay, so what I think is going on here, you know the whole tactical espionage action thing, right? Well, in Japan, that sort of fake genre is actually very commonly attached to games to make them sound unique, I guess? Somehow it carried over to the title screen in the Western release, but how it actually connects to the game? High voltage screaming action, Chameleon Twist 2. Your guess is as good as mine. At any rate, the setup is pretty much exactly the same as before. The rabbit leads your chameleon to a new fantasy world with another six stages. In the Western version, Davy is actually now the green chameleon. I guess they were trying to go for something a bit cooler and less abstract, but here's the interesting thing. The Japanese version retains the cuter and weirder original designs, including Davy being the blue one. Honestly, I like both in their own way. The sequel introduces three new moves. First up, the chameleon's backpacks now deploy a parachute with the press of the Z button at any time. This is a decent idea, but unfortunately the level design leads to it not being very necessary for most of the game. Second, an obvious addition to the horizontal tongue rotation of the first game is vertical rotation. It's similarly awkward to perform, and the few areas of the game that require it are among the most difficult, at least for me. It's really tough to get the timing and momentum just right, but I have to respect it as good use of a tongue in a platforming game. The last new move is a bit more subtle, but also potentially the most interesting. In the first game, if your tongue hits a wall, you immediately pull it back in. But now, your tongue doesn't only stick to posts and enemies, it attaches to any surface, and you can pull yourself right up to it. I love how this really integrates your main ability with the environment and it would be a killer move for grappling, platforming, and exploring in almost any game. Unfortunately, again, it's a bit underutilized in Chameleon Twist 2. I'm sure it could lead to some fancy platforming and a speed run, but it's rarely necessary outside the final level. Speaking of underutilized, Chameleon Twist 2 in many ways feels like it relies on the tongue mechanics a bit less in general when compared to the first game. A lot of times I found myself just doing everyday running and jumping, which is by no means a bad thing, but with the characters making for some unique possibilities, it feels like there are some missed opportunities due to the level design just being pretty average. It might not sound like it, but despite these misfires, Chameleon Twist 2 feels in some ways slightly more polished than the first game. It's a solid platformer and moves along at a bit of a quicker pace than the original generally favoring level design that keeps the action moving. It's also got a pretty good set of bosses, like a walrus on spiked wheels, which is pretty rad, and he's fairly challenging, as are some of the other bosses, like this giant toy robot. Chameleon Twist 2 also features as a boss one of the best-looking hamburgers I've ever seen in a video game. Ooh. 
Despite some tough moments, Chameleon Twist 2 took me about three hours to play through. Both games are short and mostly easy, but also full of good ideas and overall decent design. In addition to being Sunsoft's only involvement with the N64, these games are also the biggest mark that Japan systems supply in their adorable animated cat logo left on the gaming world. And while back in the day, these games may have not been much more than a good rental and they certainly don't have any high voltage screaming action, I think looking at them now, they stand out as enjoyable and unique examples of more traditional platforming sensibilities brought into the realm of early 3D gameplay. Mm-hmm.